Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to School Science. My name is Luke and this is the post-match reaction for Everton versus Brighton. First game of the Premier League season. That's all I'm going to say. Everton 0, Brighton 3. Now, start of the game, atmosphere was absolutely on point. Everyone was, you know, nice, loud, jubilant and everything like that. Everton were playing really well for the first uh, 15 to 20 minutes and then first goal goes in. We kind of stammer a little bit, but we, we do well. Uh, the play we were looking at sign and Mintoma, he really did himself no favours. Now, bear in mind, we had no grief with him. We had no beef with him. We know exactly what was going on. I don't think he did, though. Uh, unless something behind the scenes that we don't know for whatever reason has happened or something was said where they turn around and said, you're not to play for us or something like that. Because... My understanding was the reason we didn't get uh, Minter. I don't know why I call him Minter. Minter. The reason we didn't get Minter was because Calvert Lewin wasn't willing to go to Newcastle. It was basically going to be like what we did with Timmy Rabernum and Lewis Stobbin. We were going to do a like for like, or well, not really like for like, uh, a player swap of reasonable equal value, and that fell through because Calvert Lewin didn't want to go to Newcastle. So. That's what I was under the impression of. So unless something different has happened, I do not understand why he was being an absolute cunt. Seriously, when that goal went in, he was antagonising the fans to absolutely no end. I was in the lower Gladys, and when he scored, he came up there. He was giving the fans all this and that, freaking throwing his mouth about. And then about 10 minutes later... He ends up getting sent off. He ends up coming off because of a concussion injury. So all I can say to that is, karma. But yeah, first off, we didn't play too bad. We actually did that. We did reasonably all right. And then second half, for the first 10 minutes, we actually were doing the similar. And then the wheels just fell off. After the penalty, the wheels just completely fell off. And I'm, I don't want to point fingers at players, but quite frankly... When the penalty was disallowed, it looked like a handful of players, they, their heads just went down. And it was it's not fair. It's really not fair on the fans. We really need to try and put 110% in. Most of the team out there, I'd say Barr, Tarkowski, Irburnham, Harrison, McNeil, it's just a gay. They, their heads just dropped. Oh, Mikolenko as well. Got to give it to Michelangelo. We actually did actually put a decent shift in. But outside of those guys, it just, it felt like the, the heads just went. Calvalu, and he wasn't, you know, absolutely pumping up and down the pitch. To Corey was similar. He kept getting calls offside. He really needs to sort that out. Um, who else? Uh, Michael Keane. First off, he was doing great. He was, he was pinging absolute gems up the field to Jack Harrison. And then that got stopped the second they sussed it out and they just had someone mark Harrison. So when a long ball was coming, basically Harrison had to play it in front of him. It was nine times out of ten. It was Lewis Dunk, who's bloody a foot taller than him. Just stood in front of him like that, edged the ball and cut it out. Um, Pickford. Pickford could have done a little bit better. There was a couple of moments there where he screwed up. He shouldn't be coming out the box as often as he is. He really needs to try and stay inside of his own box. But that's that's... That's that's that, really. The only thing that's really grounds me gears, well, there's a few things that grounds me gears, but before that, I'm going to have a really quick drink. My throat is absolutely dry as anything, and I know there's some people out there who like ASMR, so... Could have been better. Apologies on that. But yeah, there's a couple of major things of been brought to my attention, which I am really not happy with. First one being the VAR decision. So on-field decision was it should have been a penalty. So in that situation, it should have been given. Now VAR did intervene and said, we want you to look at the screen. Now the thing is, that screen was not working. The VAR at Goodison Park, for some reason, the communication was not working on there. It was the same for when the VAR was meant to come on the actual billboard screens. So when it was coming onto them screens, it should have a video showing why something has happened or why this and why that, and then followed by a reason. That wasn't happening. It was just VAR on the screen about two, three minutes later. 
There was a little bit of text. This wasn't given because of this. This was given because of that. That was it. Which it shouldn't, it, it should be, but there should be a video and then that explaining so people can actually have a little bit more clarity. However, for some reason it wasn't working. And when the referee went to the screen, you could see someone actually posted a video and you could see the screen was white. It had like the little VAR logo and then it was just white. There was no image. There was no video. So his decision should have stood. Instead of them communicating with VAR and then VAR saying, don't give it. So in my opinion, I think the audio needs to be released. Now, we know Liverpool made a whole massive who are about this against Tottenham last season. So Everton should be making a whole who are about this and saying, I want you to release that VAR footage because we feel if we would have got an equalizer at that point, that would have affected the outcome of the game. It wouldn't have been a 3 0 loss. It could have been a 1 0 draw or it could have been a 2 1 win to us because that could have been an uplift for our players. So that's the main one. That's, uh, that's kind of grinding my gears, to be honest. Uh, the second one, though, however, is Sean Dyche. And I'm not going to say sack him. I'm not going to say sack him because I don't want to go down that path. I do not want us going down that path again because he is currently our manager. I want to support him until he's no longer our manager. And then I will support the next manager that comes in. Now, I am not against criticism. So if a manager is doing shit, I will say he is doing shit. In this case, he did shit. So what had, what has happened is Ashley Younger got a red card. And what he should have done is give Jacob Bryan his debut and said, right, you're coming on. Idrissa Garnagay, you're coming off. We're going to do three centre-backs here. Um, McNeil, you're going to be wing-back. Harrison, wing-back. Irribanum, you're a hybrid of six and eight. Illumin and I, you're the number 10. All that. That's all he had to do. Instead, what he ends up doing was he hung on, hung on, hung on. And by the time 90% of the fans had left the stadium, he decided, uh, who was it who came off? Jack Har was It was actually Jack Harrison. No. Jack Harrison, come off. Holgate, come on. And then they scored their third within a minute from a corner, from what I've noticed. Now, I'm going to hold my hands up. I did actually leave. I left before the full time. Mostly down to the fact that I was sick to the back of my teeth of it. Now, let's look at it like this. We are fans. We love this badge to the absolute ends of the earth. Hang on. I'm, I'm out of view of the camera. I love this badge to the absolute ends of the earth. But I'll tell you something right now. I can only support them so much. If they're playing bad, I can only support them so much before I say, you know what? Fuck this. I'm done. I want to go home. Honestly, that is my opinion. And if you want to call me a terrible fan for that, please do call me a terrible fan. Because I'll tell you something right now. I have followed these guys all around the world. I have followed them in England. I have followed them all the way to Australia. I have quite literally done as much as I can to support this club. I have basically punched the flag around New Zealand and Australia, trying to get as many people to start supporting Everton. Anytime I'm playing football, I'm always wearing Everton gear, playing football. When you see me in the gym, nine times out of 10, you're going to see me wearing either an Everton shirt or something Everton based. Like there's literally videos on my Facebook and Instagram of me at a punch bag punching, wearing an Everton shirt. I follow these guys to the absolute fucking ends of the earth. But when someone's doing, when someone's playing poorly, I will, I will support them as much as I can. And quite frankly, I've reached my limit with it. I have honestly reached my limit. Hence the reason why I left at about the 85th minute. So I left five minutes before proper full time. Not like ads of time full time, like the 90 minute full time. I left a bit early. I wasn't leaving at the 70th minute. I wasn't leaving at half time. I left at that point. I was just, I was sick of it at that point. So the fact that Sean Dice just came out and made the comments that he did saying, Oh, we know what the fans are like. No, you don't know what the fucking fans are like. You seem to you seem to live in your own world. You know we don't like Mason Holgate, yet you play him. You know we're not exactly big fans of Michael Keane, yet you play him. You, you, you know we're not a big fan of the formation and things. Well, you know we want to see the new lads, yet you're not playing them. And I understand Premier League is a whole different kettle of fish, but... 
to say that Jake O'Brien is not ready and yet you throw Mason Holgate on, who is the antithesis of a walking liability, that's just stupidity incarnate. He would do a lot better as a right centre-back than Mason Holgate would have done as a right-back. Honestly, I do not understand why he made the decisions that he did. He's got Lindstrom on the bench. Roman Dixon is a full-fledged right-back. Now, I know for a fact he's not going to get a, even a sniff when it comes to the Tottenham game. I don't even think he'll even get on the bench, but he should have Roman Dixon ready to come into that. Because from what I've seen from him and what every other Evertonian on the planet has seen from him, he is more than ready to jump into that right-back position and prove his worth. Bear in mind, that's how we started with Jared Branthwaite. We started with him because we didn't have a centre-back. Michael Keane has an injury and Mason Holgate has his injury and we only had one other centre-back. So he came in, he proved his worth. Likewise with Lewis Dobbin. We were struggling for players. He came in. He proved his worth. When we're in a crisis, look at the youth. You're, look at them young lads. Don't look at the dross that we've got there that you're trying to get out the door because that isn't adding to their value, honestly. It's not adding to the value. And don't you ever dare say that the fans don't love this club or make any sort of hint towards that because I'll tell you something right now. We're going to be... We've been here before you came to this club and we will be here after you're gone. I can promise you that. But yeah, so if you want to know what that whole tangent was about, basically he turns around and said that the fans, the fans are being fans because they weren't happy with the results. Of course we weren't happy with the results. Let's put it like this. If you were going to see a movie in the cinema, so let's say you went and gone and seen, what's the one that's Borderlands, say? Absolute shite movie. Would you sit there and watch the thing in its entirety? knowing that it is completely not a shite for the whole two hours that that thing's on? Or would you leave? Because I'll tell you something right now. I've seen the movie. I left within an hour. I even got a re... I, no, I didn't. I didn't get refunds. I just walked out. I was going to say, I went. I was going to go to the desk and get a refund, but I really couldn't be asked. It was a busy day, and I just thought, oh, fuck this. But yeah, that's, that's my rant for the day. So yeah. Everton did absolutely shite there. And um, we've got uh, Tottenham next. After that, we've got Doncaster. Now, if you're wondering why there's no drone video this week, this is just down to the fact that I've been having some issues with my phone, DJI Fly and everything. If no one's on the, under any awareness of this. So the drones that we use, a lot of the drone pilots use, if eh, all of them use, are DJI ones. And if you're on Android, you have to go through the Google Play Store to download all the apps and everything. So the thing is, DJI have had some issues with privacy and Google have actually kicked them off the store as a result. So we've had to, I've had to weave in and out to get the thing going again. And unfortunately, by the time I've got this all working again, it is too late for me to get the drone up and get flying. So I have had to basically, unfortunately, postpone it until a later date. There will be one next week. I'm going to promise you that much. As long as the weather plays ball, I'm going to get the drone out as and get something up for you because you just, you just deserve to get it up. You've been so patient with this whole thing, but the whole situation with the fucking police and the stupid no-fly zones and all this now, I I do apologise. That's all I can say. I'm so sorry about this whole thing. I'm, I know you guys are going to get it from the likes of Baz. Uh, sorry, Barry 1878. You're going to get it from Mr. Joe and SS Skies, all those guys, CP Overview. You're going to get it from them, guys. But I know some of you like the fact that I do my commentary and I have my own little quirkiness about it. So, yeah. So, you appreci I massively appreciate your patience. You, it's going to be rewarded because I'm going to try and get the best footage I can possible. And we're going to we're going to keep doing this. So, what's going to happen is while I'm not able to get the drone out, I'm going to try and do pre-match and post-match. And then when everything is done and dusted at the stadium, which is going to be the end of December at this rate... Now, bear in mind, there isn't going to be, you know, end of December, that's everything done. It's open. It's ready for business. End of December is when Lando, Lando Rourke, Lando O'Rourke, I used to call it Lando Rourke. You know what I mean? Lang. We'll call it the Lang. The Lang group will give the keys to Everton and then they can put their own little touches on it. So it's basically like when you get a brand new house and it still needs like the walls painting to your specific thing, the carpets are going to be done. You know, to your specific standards, 
stuff like that. It's just little nuancy little bits here and there. That's probably where the uh, white seats are going to come in. I'm going to mention the white seats because I know some people don't like me saying about the white seats. If anyone knows this one, they've been on this channel for a very long time. But yeah, so it's pretty much like they're going to do certain areas, going to get painted a certain colour. You know, like the uh, de the detail and onto the Everton badge in the dressing room. Uh, what else? Banners inside of the stadium, the banners on the lights and all that. All the custom stuff that's going to make it an Everton stadium is going to get done by Everton Football Club and the people they work alongside. So I'd expect that to be an extra couple of months. The only thing is, I'm going to keep a close eye on the stadium. So when I start seeing banners and anything like that, I won't really do video as well. Get the drone up and get some photos nice and close to them so we can actually see some of these nice little Everton banners that are going to be on the lights and whatnot. Because I do think that'll be a nice little touch. And they will be on the channel and they'll be on my Twitter as well. But in any case, guys, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great week. And I want to say up the fucking toffees, but right now they're fucking depressing me. But anyway, guys, take care. Have a good one and peace.